Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before we start section 7-3, pretty cool scene, huh? Nice Panama City. Oh, I love it. Okay, here we go. What we're doing in section 7.3 is we are adding and subtracting radicals. And in order to do that, the radicals need to be identical. So the square root of 3, the square root of 3, the square root of 3 are considered like terms. So there's an imaginary 1 right there. Well, it's actually a negative 1. So to do this first problem, we look at the coefficients. 7 plus 8 is 15. 15 minus 1 is 14. Okay? And then, of course, we have radical 3. So we're left with the answer 14 radical 3. Now, let me get the sun here. Here we go. Okay, this next problem. I have 8 times the cube root of 11 plus 15 times the cube root of 11. This term and this term are identical. The cube root of 11 is the same as the cube root of 11, so we can add them. Whenever you're adding radicals or subtracting them, they need to be like. So, all I do is I leave the cube root I leave the cube root of 11 and I add what's in front. 8 plus 15 is 23. And I'm left with the answer 23 times the cube root of 11. Okay? Now This next problem cannot be done the way it is because the square root of 63 and the square root of 7 are not like. So what we have to do here is work on simplifying what we can to make them like. Okay? So come here with me. All right, let's see what we got. Let me try to get in the sun or not in the sun. Here we are. Okay, nothing I can do with this 2. But the square root of 63, we can break that. Notice how I'm writing this. 63 is really 9 times 7. Okay? So the square root of 63 becomes the square root of 9 times the square root of 7. We have 2 times. The square root of 9 becomes 3. 2 times 3 is 6. So we end up getting 6 radical 7. In the back, we had plus 9 radical 7, so we bring that down now. And now we're able to do the problem. 6 radical 7 plus 9 radical 7 becomes 15 radical 7. And we're done. So whenever the problem is not able to be started, you know, you can't start it because the terms are not like, you break down one of the radicals and then you're able to begin the problem. Okay? Let's look at this example. We have the square root of 27 minus 2 root 3. There's nothing I can do here. That's as simplified as I can get. But the square root of 27 can be broken into two radicals. Okay? The, the largest perfect square that I can think of using 27 as a factor is 9. So I rewrite the square root of 27 as the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. That becomes 3 radical 3. Okay? Then I pull up the back part of the problem which is a negative 2 radical 3. And now they're like. Th 3 radical 3 minus 2 radical 3. We leave the radical 3. And 3 minus 2 is 1. And you don't actually have to show the 1. So my answer 
is just radical 3.